What's going on? Welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas Podcast. We are recording October 24th on Monday, right before Monday Night Football. It is 4.20 Central Time. Lucas and Tyler are hanging out with you tonight. I'm at Lucas Wenzel on Twitter, Tyler underscore Plath for Tyler. I just realized we don't have that up on the YouTube there. Now it should be up on the YouTube for you. Uh, (laughs) Throwing everybody off. Uh, Those are handles over on Twitter. Uh, Make sure you follow the fellas accounts as well. FF fellas on Twitter, the FF fellas on Instagram, fantasy football fellas on TikTok, and you too. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Turn on those notifications. If you are watching the video podcast right now and oh, I always forget, Tyler, I always forget this last plug. I feel like I get through all the handles, and I'm like, oh, I can breathe. We can move on to the fun stuff. Um, not that our social handles aren't fun, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, join our chalkboard. Community full of league winners. Uh, if you, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Uh, community full of league winners. Uh, we're dropping waiver wire advice, trade advice, uh, start set advice, everything of the sorts over there. You can join the uh, community of, we had 1,600 league winners. Ooh, I should double check that because I can. I know we're at fifteen hundred for sure. That's down in the description of the YouTube video or audio podcast you were listening to. We're about fifteen fifty. Fifteen fifty, right in the middle. You can join that down in the description of the audio podcast or YouTube video you are watching. Ty, we got week seven in the books here. At least by the time the listeners get this episode, right before Monday Night Football, we still have Bears, Patriots tonight. I'm going to tell you right now, the Patriots are going to win this game by a country mile. Uh, I, the only thing that we could add is that Ramondre Stevenson will be a top 15 running back. And if that, you, that'd be the only thing I can add. And he probably still wouldn't make the list of boom players for this week. Yeah. The other thing I noticed, do you know that Eberflus came out about a week ago and said that they're going to ride a hot hand at running yep. back moving forward. I'm staying away from all of Monty's props tonight. I was intrigued at first. I want nothing to do with it now. <laughs> I like. I mean, that means like Herbert at thirty three and a half. Granted, it's against kind of enticing. Chicago, but still, like that's it's a little intriguing. But point still stands. New England wins by a million tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's recap all of Sunday's action. We have that in this episode. We're gonna dive in some waiver wire ads at the end. We'll finally get some waiver advice out here. Uh, we, I, f- I feel like we, I've been meaning to do that from the get go, but then we always get into overreaction monday it's like no we're, we're cutting that this week rapid fire waiver wire is the name of the segment at the end you like that rapid fire waiver wire i thought that was kind of catchy rapid fire waiver wire it's got a ring to it it's got a ring it's got to a it. ring it's got a ring but first uh let's dive into all the news and notes from this weekend and unfortunately there were quite a few injuries this weekend including i'm still not over this one Brees hall Suffered torn ACL. He is done for the season. I am sad. There is no other way to put this. Like, like you never like to see any player get injured, but of someone of Brees Hall's caliber, for how good he was looking, like he, like it took him what two games to overthrow Michael Carter. Everyone's like, oh, it's gonna be split the entire year. I'm like, no, Brees is special, and he was truly special. He, he still is special. He still has a chance to be special. But it won't be this year. He is done for the season. That's a bummer. I mean, he... It, it, it is. It's such a bummer. It, he was he was single... And I don't think people are ready to admit this, but he was single-handedly like, changing this Jets team around. Yes. Yes. Because everything they were missing last year, I mean, from the offensive side of the ball, was a run game. And he brought it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now it's gone. So and now it's gone. And he was doing quite an amount of work in the pass catching game as well to start the season with Joe Flacco. So, I mean, I mean, this is just, this is just absolutely devastating for the New York Jets. And if you had Brees Hall on your fantasy team, you are absolutely crushed because a lot of people went out to trade for him. Like we told people to go out and trade for him after week two before, um, before he absolutely went off. Um, yeah, I, it, it's devastating. It's just, I there's no other words for it. 
<laughs> I, I feel bad for Caruso because I don't know if oh, you saw I his know. tweet, but he's got yeah. Brees Hall in a ton of his leagues. About half of his leagues he has Brees Hall. Yeah, no, I saw that tweet. Uh, and we're, we're going to talk about another guy who he has on even more teams than he had Brees Hall on. Mike Williams, high ankle sprain. He will miss some time. Uh, I haven't seen a timeline. All I saw was the report of he will miss some time and that it is a high ankle sprain. So you're talking probably four weeks. Yeah, I would even bet closer to five or six with how right. they treated Keenan Allen's hamstring injury. And again, in a, yes. they're not the same injury, but still, I would not be surprised if they go a little more conservative with the recovery for Mike Williams. Well, and I don't blame them one bit because this is a team that has big aspirations, made some big offseason moves, and they need everybody back on the field. So Caruso, man, I feel, I feel I'm feeling with you, man. I got Mike Will on too many teams this year uh, to be without him. Uh, hey, it's painful. It's painful. Another stud wide receiver, uh, DK Metcalf did leave the game on Sunday. Um, oh, why? Was his injury not on the dock here? Either way, um, he does not require surgery. Determined to practice tomorrow by the time you hear this episode. So on Wednesday. Uh, interesting. If you're the Seahawks, do, do you want to rush him back? Do you want him to take his time? Yeah, you. If you're winning games right now, you need DK Metcalf, right? I agree. And I don't mean I don't mean that in a way of like, get him back as soon as possible. I'm saying play a day to day, right? I mean, it's a patellar tendon issue. There it is. I'm like, it was a foot. I thought, yeah, like if you risk it coming back, you get a Najee Harris situation where you are forcing a guy to play, not a hundred percent with a quarterback like Geno Smith. Granted, Geno has been good, Mm -hmm. but you, you, you essentially lose an elite, an elite weapon outside because you want to pose a threat. I don't I don't buy that. Give him a week off. Yeah, give, give him the week off. I agree. You're at the top of the division. Give him a week off. Bring him back strong. David Njoku, also seen in a walking boot, also has an ankle sprain. He will miss two to five weeks. He was just one of your favorite streaming options this year, if you had him on your team. He, he was never a weekly starter, unless if you had like Kyle Pitts and you were determined to sit Kyle Pitts most weeks. Um, but yeah, David Njoku will be out two to five weeks. He was having himself a nice season after getting paid this off season. Amon Ra was knocked out, uh, of yesterday's game with what was deemed a concussion. Um, but Dan Campbell came out and said today that, um, they took him out based on the NFL's new concussion protocol, which essentially had to do with like instability, um, I can't remember what the other one was, but essentially uh, he fit the new protocol. Therefore, they took him out, but he does not have a concussion. He will be back next week and will probably be practicing this week as well. So sigh of relief there for the Lions and all Amon Ra managers. Dalton Schultz tweaked his uh, knee against the Lions. It's just fine. Uh, I believe he had nine fantasy points this week, so that was a nice little bounce back from him. But at the same time, uh, you're expecting a little bit more. P.J. Walker was named the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers in Week 8, no matter the health of Baker Mayfield or Sam Darnold. Dumpster fire. That's the only word I have to say. <laughs> I mean, I can I can understand it to a certain extent because you could argue you you can make an argument that pj walker has been the better quarterback out of the three so far this year <laughs> that's not really fair to sam darnold because he hasn't really seen the field at all this year but like we can only imagine <laughs> right you're right and, and i i wonder if this is really just a like this was a rally game for the panthers right why not just continue to ride with the guy that they all seem to kind of jive with the best right because they were not clicking with baker why put Baker back in then? So, I don't know. Th- to me, this spells like the end of Baker Mayfield. He's now like a Mitch Trubisky. He is not a starting quarterback. I agree. Yeah, I and Baker did not look like a starting quarterback this year in the NFL at all. Speaking of quarterbacks who do not look like starting quarterbacks in the NFL, Matt Ryan 
I man, Colts will bench him in favor of Sam Ellinger in week eight. What? <laughs> like, like what are you doing if you're the Colts? I'm so good. Like, are you trying? Like, okay, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sit here and, and, and make an argument that Matt Ryan has been good this year. I can't make that argument. But also, like, if you're the Colts, you also have enough pieces to come close to winning your division and to make the playoffs. So is this just like tankathon now? Like you're just throwing in the towel on the year, even though you have a really good wide receiver and Michael Pittman are one of the league's best running backs and John. Like, what is the end goal here? I don't, I don't like I don't get this because Sam Ellinger is also not your future. Right? He can't be. I I, I think it, the more confusing question for me is uh, the Colts rostered three quarterbacks this year. Matt Ryan, Sam uh, Sam Ellinger, and Nick Foles. That's right. Nick Foles is – I forget Nick Foles is there. Like, And I get that Nick Foles is not like 2017 Nick Foles, right? But well, – What? I <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Everything that I've read seems it, it sounds like the team really really likes Ellinger and they're just looking to see at what they got. That to me means they're okay losing games and they're just going to tank. That's probably the end of Frank Reich after this year. It's got to be. Frank Reich is going to be on the hot seat if not going to see the can for sure after this year. Um I don't understand that at all. Yeah, it's not a winning move, but it's also like you had you. Know, I don't know if you have enough pieces to lose, <laughs> like, or if you have too many pieces that would keep you from losing. So I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm expecting Jonathan Taylor to be shut down for the year. I'm waiting for that report this week now. <laughs> Deion Jackson to the moon. <laughs> Last piece of news here. Um, this I can't believe we're actually going to discuss this we're not going to discuss it chase Clay, chase claypool report came out over the weekend he is on the trading block for a christian mccaffrey sized package because everybody was clamoring for chase claypool everybody wants a piece of chase claypool stupid stupid uh, just i hate that report but I didn't even study journalism. I can make a better report than I, ah, I, that's a little too much. I just don't what, why would a team in their right mind? I mean, again, similar is, was the word. So it's not the same, but again, a second, a third and a fourth and a fifth next year for McCaffrey. There is a team out there. One of the 31 other teams in the NFL that would be willing, apparently I shouldn't say that. The Steelers would ask for it. Yeah, the Steelers are expecting someone to approach them with that. Like, what? Nobody's how, doing that for how Chase can Claypool. They expect that? How can they expect that? You can't. That's the answer. You can't. That was News and Notes brought to you. I didn't even mention who our News and Notes are brought by. Brought, by, brought to you by your friends over at Sleeper. Yay. Number one fantasy football platform in the world. You can join over 4 million people by using the link down in the description of this YouTube video or the audio podcast you are listening to. Wow. I didn't have that in the notes, so I just went right over it. Shout out to Sleeper, bringing us our news and notes for the week. Thanks, Sleeper. All right, let's move on to our booms and busts now for the week. This was just a funky week. I Like, one word. How do you describe this week? Mumbo jumbo. <laughs> nothing. I nothing. I, I there are no mumbo words. jumbo. <laughs> I mean, you look at the individual games. You have Carolina being Tampa. You have Washington being in Green Bay. You have Kansas City absolutely dominating San Francisco. You've got Seattle going into L.A. and beating them. Granted, a lot of their injuries and stuff. So like, there were a lot of lops. I shouldn't say lopsided. Flip flop games, and then. This was the week of, like, I'm not going to say no names, but this was the week of, like, wait, the, he, what? He yeah, did right, that? The, what? 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 Yeah, that's this week. 
that's this week, especially our wide receivers. My goodness. Um, <laughs> let's start with running backs, though. We're going to start with running backs. Uh, we need to start with the man who made history on Sunday. We have to start with the man who made history. Josh Jacobs, 20 rushing attempts, 143 yards, three rushing touchdowns. Also had three receptions for 12 yards. Good for 36 and a half fantasy points. Josh Jacobs is the first running back ever to have three straight games of 140 plus rushing yards and 30 fantasy points. So that that the kicker is other people have had three straight games of 30 plus fantasy points. The kicker is 140 rushing yards. Like this isn't a Christian McCaffrey. I had eight receptions for you know, 70 yards and a touchdown and then, you know, a bunch of rushing. Right? Like, no, Josh Jacobs has done all of his work on the ground. Three straight games with 30-plus fantasy points and 140 rushing yards. Like, I feel like that's not being mentioned or said enough. This is, I mean, don't don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that Josh Jacobs is this player. But this is like Adrian Peterson type like running for fantasy football Derrick Henry a couple years ago right like just stockpiling yards and I think the only difference between again Adrian Peterson and Derrick Henry is that it was kind of expected right like yeah. you knew what you were going to get from those guys Josh Jacobs was an absolute wild card this year yes and he was he is, and the he's Hall probably, of Fame game uh, he's he's been the like I'll, I'll, I mean He's a contender for steal of the draft or steal of the year so far. Oh, he has to be. Yeah. He has to be because you could have told me Josh Jacobs would be fine at his value and I would have believed you. I was out on him because of the Hall of Fame game, because of Samir White, because of the way Josh McDaniels has liked to run his offense in the past. If you would have told me nobody, you can't tell me that you expected Josh Jacobs to, to, to make history this year. In this way, you could not have convinced me of that, that you actually thought this was going to happen. So this is one of those where it's like, I'll gladly take my L on saying we're out on Josh Jacobs. I'm, I'll happily take that L. But like, you can't tell me in your right mind that you expected this kind of production from Josh Jacobs. You, you, you just can't. You just can't. Not even, not even close. I mean, for the reasons that you said, Jacobs was border like closer to flex than he was like an RB, you know, like a running back one right like oh right then a running back one yes i agree i agree yeah like if <laughs> if you want to come tell us like that we're you know that we were stupid for not being in on Josh Jacobs we will again explain the reasons that Lucas just said it seemed like it almost felt like everything pointed to Josh Jacobs not being this Right. Somehow things just don't go the way that you plan them to. That's and, fantasy football. I mean, even when he was the guy, though, he wasn't this good. Right. So that's the other thing. Like, this is peak Josh Jacobs we're getting right now. I think you have to remember that, too. Austin Eckler running back one on the week. My goodness, 12 targets, 12 receptions, 96 yards. Like, Eckler, his rushing work is not going to be pretty this year. Like, Eckler is going to be the running back one because he's a wide receiver this year. This is Christian McCaffrey type numbers. Yes. Yes. The, like, yes. That's exactly what this is. The, like, we are witnessing the second coming of Christian McCaffrey, except his name is Austin Eckler. Because nine rushing attempts for 31 yards, I mean, he did get fall into the end zone, but 12 for 96 and a touchdown. Like, that is. This is the invaluable portion of pass catching in fantasy football that we cannot stress enough. People will say, Austin Eckler, man, he looked awful the first couple of weeks. But that didn't matter because he was going to be involved in this passing attack. And now without Mike Williams, Austin Eckler to the moon, baby. Like, like we're going to continue to see this kind of production from him until we get all three of Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen back on the football field together. He... <laughs> Over the last four weeks, he's put up over 100 total fantasy points. He's gone 34, 35, 24, 36. Yeah. That's crazy. That is right. insane. Granted, they have a bye, so things can change because things always change over a bye week in terms of, you know, workloads and volume and stuff. Right. Then they come back, and then they, it's not as 
easy of a schedule, right? Because they <laughs> they just play teams like Jacksonville, Houston, Cleveland, Denver, Seattle, right? Like some games were lost, but very favorable for an Austin Eckler. Yep. Now they've got teams, Atlanta, San Francisco, Kansas City. That should be a, a big point game for him. But, like, it's not an easy stretch for him. It's, I'm not going to say it's going to be a bumpy road because, like you said, Mike Williams is out. He's a receiving back. He, it's not a stretch to say to expect like twenty two, twenty three, going forward. Now, no, I, I don't think so either. Um, because you're not like even the scary matchups. I'm not as concerned because Austin Eckler can still catch eight passes and salvage his day. That's what I'm looking for at the end of the day. Uh, running back three on the week. This dude is going to be special. I think. I know it's only two games. I really don't want to overreact because he does have a decent, like a little bit more of a difficult schedule coming up. Ken Walker, though, 23 rushing attempts, 168 yards, two touchdowns, nothing in the receiving game, but like, I mean, still good for, you know, 28 fantasy points on the day. I, he looks so good. He looks so good right now. And and with how Pete Carroll likes to run this offense, like I I fear he may be insanely good. I shouldn't say fear, but like I would I, I I'm I'm just kind of dumbfounded that Ken Kenneth Walker has done what he has in the past two weeks. I know I said a, a couple of weeks ago that it was an overreaction to call Kenneth <laughs> Walker a league winner. I think <laughs> I still stand by it. But it was more so of, I was just trying to convey, give it a week, see what this, see what happens before we put that label on him. Sure. Sure. And now he's kind of proving it. I mean, he is, he is like dynamic. He has looked so, so good. Yeah. League winner. If you were able to get him on waivers, league winner. I, he's just he's looked so good. I can't get over that. Uh, let's go through some honorable mentions here. Aaron Jones, welcome back. Uh, nine receptions for 53 yards, two touchdowns through the air. This Packers team still stinks. They stink. Oh, they're like the they're like the Broncos, but slightly better. <laughs> yeah. And the Broncos get a pass this week because Russell Wilson wasn't in the game. But how do you lose to the Commanders? How, Sway? They were, they were up 14-3, if I'm not mistaken. They were up. They were they were winning, and they blew Packers the lead. Packers stink, man. I can't believe that. Like, like, I'm okay with it because I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. It doesn't upset me as much as the Broncos do. Oh, it's infuriating, though. If you draft any Packer... You're slightly infuriated, except for Aaron Jones. But even up to this point, you've been pretty infuriated with Aaron Jones. Enough said. Can I move on? Move on. <laughs> Aaron, you know Benjamin, running back five on the week, 12 for 92, one touchdown, four receptions, 21 yards, good for 23 fantasy points. Uh, this New Orleans run defense is not as good as we think, I fear. Uh, if Eno Benjamin <laughs> runs for seven and a half yards per carry against you, um, something needs to change. That's concerning because they were supposed to be stout, and they had been up to this point, but now back-to-back -back weeks, they have gotten torched on the ground. Uh, Eno Benjamin's making a really good case to uh, kick James Conner to the curb. <laughs> I would agree with that. Don't, no need to rush James Conner back. Why would you? <laughs> James Conner hasn't been efficient anyways. Now Eno Benjamin does this to the New Orleans defense. I, I sneaky like Eno Benjamin a lot. Raheem Mostert was running back six on the week, uh, 16 for 79, caught four passes, uh, and caught one through the air as well, 21 fantasy points. He's the guy you want in Miami. I think he's going to be a little bit matchup dependent on who he gets every week, whether he, he gets these explosive games or not. Um, but you still like to see it. You still like to see it. Travis Etienne. 
Welcome to the NFL. Welcome to this new era of the Jacksonville Jaguars where Travis Etienne is now the running back one for this offense. Because you want to know why? James Robinson got skunked. Absolutely skunked. Travis Etienne, 14 for 114 and a touchdown. Caught five passes for five, or excuse me, five targets, only caught one of them for five yards. 18.9 fantasy points. If you have Travis Etienne Jr., you're feeling pretty good about yourself right now. Yeah, I mean, this was the game that I think a lot of people were expecting in week one. Yes. <laughs> and it's it's nice to finally see it. But I also think it's a little matchup dependent just with the Jacksonville team. I mean, again, we need to start putting more respect on the Giants. Yes. But they lost to the Giants, okay? Like, and you look at both rosters on paper, and you can't tell me that Jacksonville has a better roster. But for whatever reason, it's just, I don't know, it's not clicking in Jacksonville. So, again, just like with Raheem Moster, I think probably it's still a little bit matchup dependent but the fact that james robinson is slowly getting kind of phased out of this offense brings some optimism back yes yeah if you're a travis etm manager you were in shambles now you're starting to see life again i'm kind of happy for you well uh, uh, y'all were a happy. noisy bunch and <laughs> oh that's true yeah they, they were pretty noisy too and uh <laughs> i was tired of seeing all of uh all of the relentless posts and Nobody truly speaking up and saying he's a bust. Uh, no, not a bust. I need to move on before I say something else. Nick Chubb. <laughs> hey, he's good at football. 16 for 91 and a touchdown. Gus Edwards. To nobody's surprise, his first week back, he is the guy in Baltimore. We'll talk more about him later. 66 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Joe Mixon, he's pretty good at football. And here it is, Tyler. The return of Ezekiel Elliott, the return of Zeke. Everybody wanted to doubt Zeke. He's washed, they say. He's not as efficient as Tony Pollard, they say. To them, I say, I do not care. Ezekiel Elliott, two touchdowns on the day, and you just look at that schedule coming up, and it's going to be more of these 60, 70-yard days for Zeke. Give him a touchdown on top of it. Um, it did not get targeted in the passing game, though. I will say that. I think we can expect that to change, though, just because the Cowboys absolutely feasted on the Detroit Lions on the ground yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Detroit wouldn't stop them. They couldn't. They couldn't. And uh, I guess the only thing I'll say before we move on is just put some respect on our name, please, because we, we said this at the beginning of the season. We said this a couple of weeks ago, if not last week. I don't care how good ten, Tony Pollard is. I don't care how many big runs he breaks off. Zeke Elliott is still a focal point of that offense. Enough said. Put some respect on her name on the wide receiver booms. Wide receiver booms. Jamar Chase. Uh, he's pretty good at football. I like Jamar Chase. One of my favorite players. Oh, it, it, he. Yeah, like arguably a top five wide receiver. Yeah, I yeah, can go pretty good. I can I can go get my Jamar Chase jersey right now, so I can show you how how much I love that man. Uh, <laughs> number one wide receiver on the week, thirty three fantasy points, one hundred and thirty receiving yards on eight receptions, two touchdowns. He's good at football. Next guy on the list though, Tyler Boyd, wide receiver two on the week, eight receptions for one hundred and fifty five yards and a touchdown, good for twenty nine and a half fantasy points. Like Tyler Boyd is just one of those guys every year. You can get him out of value in your drafts, and he's he's going to give you a few of these weeks. And then the rest of the season, he's going to be a little bit uh, inconsistent. He's going to be falling in the you know eight to twelve fantasy point range every week. It'll give you a few of these games, and if you start him on the right week, oh brother, like like Tyler Boyd, he'll always be a valuable piece to have on your fantasy rosters. I mean, is this not Tyler Lockett from a couple of years ago? <laughs> I mean, in some ways, I, I think Tyler Boyd, he, he'll never have the big game as consistently as Tyler Lockett will. No. But, like, if you're in a pinch and you need to start a wide receiver, like, if you've had Keenan Allen, we've had this in one of our other leagues that we're in, uh, Creator League, 
but we have Keenan Allen and he hasn't played, but we had Tyler Boyd as our wide receiver four. We've been slotting him in. It's a great week to play Tyler Boyd this week. <laughs> Nicole Hardman. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Wide receiver three on the week. Only four targets. Four receptions, 32 yards and a touchdown. Two rushing attempts for 28 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, I don't know how to feel about this. I, I just don't. How, do, how should I feel about this? He's the new CEH. <laughs> Three straight games. Double digit fantasy points for Michael Hardman. That is the truth. But I think you can expect this to come crashing down to earth after the bye week. I wasn't sure if you're going to add anything onto that. Uh, his teammate, Juju Smith Schuster, seven receptions, 124 yards, and a touchdown. 25.4 fantasy points. Our top four wide receivers come from two teams. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. Juju, is he an established uh, fantasy asset now? Can you start him in your lineups? I think so. I think this Chiefs offense is kind of hitting their stride a little bit. <laughs> and guess what? Guess what? It doesn't involve CEH. It involves more Juju. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? Yeah, I agree. I think you can start Juju going forward. Back-to-back weeks at 20-plus fantasy points. Uh, I believe this is his fourth game this year now with at least eight targets as well. So it's not like Juju hasn't been getting the volume, but again, when this offense clicks through its passing threats or its receiving threats and not through cheapo little CEH plays, I mean, we saw this week Isaiah Pacheco was getting running back one duties. And this team should be going through its its passing attack. So... Yeah, I think you can uh, fire up Juju Smith-Schuster from here on out. A few honorable mentions here we can cruise through. Paris Campbell. Second week that he has seen 10, or I believe he's seen 23 targets the past two weeks. Saw 12 this week, so he saw 11 last week, 70 yards and a touchdown for uh, Paris Campbell. I want nothing to do with him now that Sam Ellinger is the quarterback. Marquise Goodwin. <laughs> uh Four receptions on five targets for 67 yards and two touchdowns. I think you're a little bit touchdown dependent there, but with no DK Metcalf, I become interested. We'll talk about him, we'll talk about him a little bit more later as well. Uh, Mike Williams, before he got injured, nine targets, seven receptions, 86 yards and a touchdown. Like Mike Williams was making us look so good. <laughs> he, I mean, he had his extremes right. Like we 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 acknowledged you were going to get the extreme lows with Mike Williams. But these are the weeks, like, Mike Will, when he goes off, he's going to give you 18 to 20-plus fantasy points. There are not many other wide receivers who can do that on their boom games consistently. Uh, He was making us look really good. Now we're going to be without him for probably, like you said, four to six weeks, which is painful. DeAndre Hopkins in his return, how about 14 targets? Four, like, just did not miss a beat. 10 receptions for 103 yards. Good for 20 fantasy points. Like, good for DeAndre Hopkins, man. Like, good for DeAndre Hopkins. Misses came six out, games, just waltzes right back into his old yeah. numbers. Yeah, he came out to prove a point, and point was proven. <laughs> point proven, point taken. <laughs> DJ Moore. Is DJ Moore back? I freaking hate this. He probably is. He probably is because P.J. Walker just – I'm not going to say he's a one-read guy, but P.J. Walker understands, oh, wait, we have a really good wideout. Should probably get him the ball. And we don't have Christian McCaffrey to get involved anymore. I think that's the biggest thing is that D.J. Moore is that offense now until he's traded, if he gets traded. I just I just hope he doesn't get doubled or a safety over the top. I just – I just, you know he will. You know he will. He he has to. He has to, but... Only third know. game of the year that DJ Moore has had six-plus receptions or a touchdown. And, of course, this all happens after I trade him, but that's... Sorry, I, I, I bought super low on him, too, so I'm feeling pretty good about my move right now. Um, like, little Brandon Cooks for DJ Moore action, and... Uh, I think I'm I think I'm going to come on on the other side of that. Mike Evans rounds out the top ten on the week, then. Bounce back in a big way, 15 targets, nine receptions for 96 yards, good for 18 and a half fantasy points. This is just what you expect out of Mike Evans, plain and simple. 
Let's move on to some quarterback booms for the week. Joe Burrow. All right, he's pretty good. I like. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, look a little bit silly right now on uh, the Joe Burrow prediction for this year. 34 completions for 481 yards, three touchdowns, fell into the end zone on the ground as well. Good for 39 fantasy points. Was the wide, was the wide receiver, the quarterback won by a country mile this week. Like I, I, I applaud you, Joe Burrow. I making me look bad. I'll, 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 I'll take that. I'm okay with accepting that. I mean, here's the other thing, though. Anyone going against Atlanta? If you're a running back, um, good luck. <laughs> if you're a quarterback or a wide receiver, have fun because it's going to be a great week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can fire up pretty much almost anybody against Atlanta. Specifically, your quarterbacks and your wide receivers. You got to get them in your lineups. Andy Dalton made us look stupid. How was he going to throw for 361 after barely hitting 200 the previous three weeks? Four touchdowns through three picks, too. But, like, my goodness, Andy Dalton. Okay, I get it. I mean, granted, when you throw two pick sixes, two pick sixes in a row, though, and you're just forced to chuck the crap out of the football afterwards, that was not kind. That was not kind to uh, taking the under and uh, thinking it would, this would be a fairly low scoring, not a freaking shootout affair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that game, I think Al Michaels said it during the game. He was like, um, <laughs> feels like this is like a makeup for the past two weeks of Thursday Night Football. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, totally, totally does. That's exactly what that uh, that was. Uh, Daniel Jones, quarterback three on the week. Really on the back of 11 rushing attempts for 107 yards and a touchdown. Completed 19 passes for 202 yards and a touchdown. But Danny Dimes, did you know he's a top 12 quarterback right now? It's hard to say just because he doesn't really have any wide receivers, but it's nice to see Wandale stepping up. He's he's like I, I would say he's closer to fifteen, but he's he's been working his way closer and closer. For yeah, sure. he 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 it's a top twelve quarterback right now. He's quarterback eleven on the season. Well, when you put it like that, then yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh and it's coming on his legs, right? Like Daniel Jones hasn't looked impressive through the air, but it's coming with his legs, which is encouraging because that was something we all thought could be turned up this year with Brian Dable now. In New York. Uh, let's bring up a few honorable mentions. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, do you know he's pretty good at football? Over 400 passing yards against the San Francisco defense. Three touchdowns as well. Good for 28 fantasy points. Uh, I think he'll be okay. I think he'll be okay at football. He can probably do this another time or two. Yeah, probably. Probably. How about this guy, though? Get a load of this guy. Davis Mills, quarterback five on the week. 41 passing attempts, 28 for 302, two touchdowns. Man, it really falls off after those top four. It really falls off. 39 for Burrow, 29 and a half for, um, excuse me, Andy Dalton, Daniel Jones at 28.8, Holmes at 28. Boom. Davis Mills with 19. Like, this is just what kind of a week it was in fantasy football. Um, because then you go on to the next guy, like Justin Herbert. Had himself a nice week. Only two touchdowns, but still 33 completions for nearly 300 yards. A couple of rushing attempts, but only 19 fantasy points. Still winds up as a quarterback six on the week. Like, that's just what kind of a week it has been. Trevor Lawrence, a quarterback seven, 22 of 43 for 310. Fell to the end zone on the ground. Four rushing attempts for three yards, 18.7 fantasy points. Jimmy G, ain't nothing but a G thing. 37 oh. passing attempts, 25 completions. <laughs> what? <laughs> just just keep going. I'm just going to sit here and just judge the crap out of the little. Oh, gosh. That was the rap reference I just made. Capital Records signed this man. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, Jimmy G, 300 yards, 25 completions, two touchdowns. Good for 17 fantasy points. Kyler Murray and Tua wrap out the top 10. 17 for Kyler Murray, 16 for Tua Tagovailoa. Wasn't hard to be a top 10 quarterback this week. Kirk Cousins would have been a top three quarterback this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Totally top five. kidding. I would have given you top five. I would have given you a top five, but top three. I... <laughs> tight let's, move on to, let's move on to the tight end booms of the week. Uh, in case you didn't hear me when I said it on our TikTok last week, George Kittle is back. Okay, he's back. George Kittle is back. Nine targets, six receptions, 98 yards, and a touchdown. Number one tight end on the week for 21.8 fantasy points. This is what you expect out of George Kittle. And that's it. That's my analysis. Like this is what you should be expecting out of him most weeks. He won't give you twenty one every week, but he'll you know, he'll give you he should be giving you twelve plus every single week. He, it was it was the biggest mystery in the world why <laughs> they just didn't use Kittle anymore in the receiving game. And it's and it's been great having him back in the receiving game, but I'm <laughs> I'm very, very cautious because Kyle Shanahan is just the grim reaper when it comes to fantasy football managers and likes to, you know. Take them away when you love them the most. Exactly. So don't be surprised if Kittle literally puts up a goose egg next week because <laughs> that's just how it works. That is, that is legitimately his floor. Uh, Jawan Johnson, 5 of 5 for 32 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, nice little game against the Cardinals who are just abysmal against tight ends. I don't think I wouldn't chase Jawan Johnson. No, 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 no. I mean, this is partly in, in, or this was in part because Michael Thomas was out. Jarvis Landry was out. They needed weapons and, and he's still, he was still behind Adam Troutman before Troutman got hurt. Correct. Yeah, don't go chasing Jawan Johnson. There are better options for you on the waiver wire, which we will talk about later. Travis Kelsey, hey, he's uh, pretty good at football. I feel like I've said that a lot tonight. But again, we see this drop, 20-plus fantasy points for Jawan and George Kittle. Now we're down to 15.8 for Travis Kelsey. Pat Fryermuth, nine targets. I didn't realize he had such a high target share last night. Like I knew in the first half he was being targeted heavy, but that, that continued. Uh, eight for 75. 15 and a half fantasy points. David Njoku, yeah, he had a really nice week before getting injured. Seven for 71. Gerald Everett, welcome back. Nice little bounce back week. Nine targets, five receptions, 63 yards for 11, 11.3 fantasy points, excuse me. Greg Dulcich, we'll talk about him later. We'll talk about him later, but uh, ends up being the tight end. Seven on the week with 11 fantasy points. Hayden Hurst, what are we doing with Hayden Hurst? Can I ask this? Like, like I... I acquired Hayden Hurst in a trade this morning on a team where I already have Travis Kelsey. So it's not like, like Hayden Hurst is more depth for me or trade bait than anything else. But like, what do we do with Hayden Hurst? Can you start him? He's a I tight end 11 can. on the season. Yeah, I think he can. I mean, he has two games. Uh, or My bad. Maybe I should explain it this way. He's got five games with over uh, seven fantasy points has four games with over seven targets, four games with over five catches, two touchdowns. Like, he gets he gets this, like, middle ground volume for tight ends where it's like, you know what, you're going to fit into this kind of low-end tight end territory. But, like, if you've got Kyle Pitts, I sure hope you have Hayden Hurst on your team because Hayden Hurst has pretty much saved your tight end spot because Kyle Pitts is Kyle Pitts, but... <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about the pits later. Uh, Evan Ingram, uh, ten point seven fantasy points, and Kate Otten. As long as uh, Cameron Braid is out, I think you can uh, slot Kate Otten into your lineup if you're desperate. Yeah, because that's what his. I mean, it was as I'm looking up his point totals. I mean, he went double digit fantasy points both weeks without Cameron Braid. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's startable yep yeah he is startable if you are in a pinch those were our boom players of the week Ty we got 15 minutes to fly through all of the bus from this week I hate to start with this player at running back though because this is your guy what 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 tell me tell me here, here here's your 30 what's happened to AJ Dillon 
1.5 fantasy points, only four rushing attempts for 15 yards, zero targets after a great week one. What What is happening with A.J. Dillon? I mean, the Green Bay Packers are the football version of a midlife crisis. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, they 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 it's paid vibes for a sh- brand new shiny car. <laughs> they couldn't go without it. They had to have it at whatever it cost. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I like it's it, it's Philly vibes from last year where the fans were literally like pleading for them to run the ball, right? Like. I mean, yes, Aaron Jones had a great week. He, he was running back three in the week. He only had eight carries. A.J. Dillon only had four carries. For whatever reason, defenses are just not respecting these running backs. And I I, I just don't know. I it was great to see receiving work for Aaron Jones because you can at least start him based off of that. But A.J. Dillon, on the other hand, not only is he not getting carries, he's not getting receiving work anymore, which is scary to me. Yeah. Yeah, he's not – zero targets. He's been getting absolutely skunked in that department. So A.J. Dillon, pretty abysmal. Leonard Fournette, 4.6 fantasy points. If you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, oh, I, what's going on with the Bucs? I don't know what's going on with them right now. Lost to the Carolina Panthers on Sunday. Go for it. Oh, I was. I had an answer for your question of what is going on. But What's continue. going on? No, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. We're getting to the point in the season where we're seeing where – or we're getting to the point in the season where head coaches start showing their true colors. Dennis Allen, head coach of the Saints. He's a coordinator. He's not a head coach. I'm going to say it. Todd Bowles. He's a coordinator, not a head coach. Right? That's just, <clears throat> we're getting to this point in the season, like I said, where head coaches are starting to show why they really can't be head coaches. And yes, you would think over time, right? Dennis Allen was a, a head coach and then he became a coordinator and. Same with Bolts. He was a head coach and then a coordinator again. And you would think over time, like you would learn and pick up things that you would, you know, that you learned from your first time, but and then your time as a coordinator under a new head coach. No, sometimes coaches are just better off being coordinators. Leonard Fournette, eight rushing attempts, nineteen yards, two receptions for seven yards, four point six fantasy points. He was the running back. Running back, excuse me, stumble through that. 42 on the week. Melvin Gordon, 11 rushing attempts, 33 yards. No, this isn't right. Right? Let me double Is this check. Right? Let me double check. 11 attempts for 33 yards, two receptions for 17 yards. Oh, they played uh, They played the Jets. Yeah, that's correct. That should be correct. Yep, that is correct. Yeah, that should be correct. Uh, 11 rushing attempts for 33 yards, two receptions for 17 <clears throat> yards. I mean, they got him more involved, but uh, <laughs> that's how I feel. An- another reason why Nathaniel Haggis should not be the head coach. Of the yeah, he, he, he's gonna. He, I don't think he makes it through the season. No, I don't think. Like, I, I don't think he does. He really, he really shouldn't. It, it move on before we <laughs> spiral out. <laughs> uh both Clyde edwards Zuller and Isaiah Pacheco were disappointing this week, running back 44 for Pacheco, running back 30 for Clyde. And Najee Harris, like, again, he was nearly, he was, he, he's a top 25 running back as of this recording with 11 fantasy points. Like, I, I don't know what is going on with fantasy football scoring this year. Like, I understand people have made the, the case of teams are getting more clever with cover two. We're seeing a ton of cover two. I get how that impacts quarterbacks and wide receivers, but th- this running back scoring is still atrocious. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, let's move on to the wide receiver bus uh, because we also have waiver wire ads. We want to rapid fire waiver wire at the end. Amon Ra, wide receiver 87. He left with an injury. Uh, you, you can excuse that one. Drake London, aye, aye, aye. Only one target, one reception on that target for nine yards. The target share king, all of a sudden, uh, is, the true colors are coming through for that offense. Uh, 35% Mariota. target share really didn't mean a lot for Drake London. Yeah, Marcus Mariota is uh, not good. 
Not good. He's pretty bad. What other descriptive words can we use for Marcus Mariota? Placeholder. They're just not quite fine. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> uh, backup quarterback material. <laughs> <laughs> we won't bury the man too much. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, yes, Drake London is suffering from Marcus Mariota syndrome. Uh, DK Metcalf, 2.2 fantasy points. Left with an injury as well. You know what we forgot way back at the beginning of the episode? What did we forget? <clears throat> Apparently, Kareem Hunt is on the trade block. You, oh, you yeah. Remember, you saw that, right? Yep. I don't know why that popped into my head just now. Probably because he only, uh, well, he scored a touchdown this week, but he only had, what, four rushing attempts again for, uh, like, 18 yards? Again. On the end zone? Gosh. Mm, it takes me off and just move on before I... <laughs> yeah, I, no, no, he's he's not your flag plant. He was my flag plant. I'm pretty peeved. I Notice how I choose not to talk about Kareem Hunt on this podcast because I can't. I, I, <laughs> I just possibly can't. Keenan Allen... Two targets, two receptions for 11 yards. The wide receiver 70 on the week. They're probably just easing him back into the offense yeah, here. He was on some extra rest before the bye. Uh, and then Cortland Sutton, yikes, nine targets uh, from Brett Ripien. Oh, boy. Three receptions for 23 yards. Wide receiver 63 on the week. It's Jerry he- Duty wide receiver one season. Sorry, Cam. Kidding. Totally kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> I, I just want nothing to do with that Broncos offense anymore. They disgust me. Rondell Moore is an honorable mention here. His first catch of the game was his only action that he got. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure he ran the ro- most routes in that game. Yeah, he was on the field. Like I shouldn't say every play, but he was on the field a lot. Pretty much every play. He was <laughs> running a f- piss ton of routes. Only comes up with one reception. Garrett Wilson. 6.4 fantasy points, wide receiver 57. You cannot start a Jets wide receiver with Zach Wilson. Brandon well, Cooks, 8.6 fantasy. Well, okay, go for it. Let me ask you this. Now that Brees Hall is injured, do they kind of let Zach Wilson let loose a little bit just because? No, I think they just turned to, I think they just turned to Michael Carter and Ty Johnson. I think they uh-huh. just used the combo of them to fill the hole. Ty Johnson is still on that team, and he 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 can play a decent little role. So I don't you think you're so, here first, folks. Ty Johnson is going to be a stash this week. When I make my video for Fantasy Pros this week, I, I'm going to have Ty Johnson as a stash. I'm a sneaky Ty Johnson fan here. Sneaky Ty Johnson guy. Brandon Cooks, get him off your team. Uh, that isn't a cut, Brandon Cooks. That's a like package him and go trade him. I want nothing to do with him anymore. Davis Mills is disgusting. What was Nico Collins' line? Great That's question. more so what I'm curious about. I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, oh Nico Collins, and he, he suffered a groin injury. So he went three for 33 in dealing with a groin injury. I got to find who. I mean, Chris Moore, their wide receiver three. I don't know who that is, but he... Uh, yep. He had 20 yards. Who was there? Who was their receiver? Rex Burkhead. Who is who's old Jags running back? Dari. Dari Agumbawale. Aha. He also Dari Agumbawale. Yes. He had seven receptions. Damian Pierce had four. <laughs> I should no Dari. <laughs> Dari had seven targets. Sorry, but five receptions. Still, why does he have seven targets? Is he playing slot? He's got to be playing slot. Their tight end, I mean, Brevin Jordan and, and uh, <clears throat> Jordan Akins had eight targets combined. <sighs> Disgusting. <laughs> Debo Samuel, I, I got to move on from Brandon Cooks. We could tear into Brandon Cooks all night, and I think I would be okay with it. Debo Samuel, 9.4 fantasy points. The wide receiver, 43 on the week. Michael Pittman, oh, I am disgusted with him. 9.8 fantasy points. The wide receiver, 40 on the week. Now with Sam Ellinger throwing him the football. This is like, you know the Stephen A video I always send you all? That's just like that face where it says, ah! That's how I feel. 
Someone clip that, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> I want to make that meme again, but just do Lucas's voice over. I could do it more aggressive, but uh, I didn't want to disturb my wife, but it doesn't matter. She can hear me through these paper-thin walls in our apartment. So <laughs> She's going to come on and say, why'd you just scream? I'm like, oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, honey. Quarterback bus, Lamar Jackson. Only threw the ball 16 times, 10 attempts for 59 yards. This was just kind of like an ugly ugly-ish game against the Browns, and when Gus Edwards got it going, you just don't want to take the football out of his hands because there was no stopping that man. Quarterback 21 on the week. He'll be just fine. We don't need to dig into this too much. All right, so here we go. I'm more concerned about this player. Tom Brady threw the ball 49 freaking times. Can only come up with 290 passing yards and no touchdowns. The wide receiver, or wide receiver, quarterback 20 on the week, 11.7 fantasy points. Is Tom Brady toast? Is this the end? Is my dad going to retire? <laughs> <laughs> Father um, Brady. I think it's partly because of offensive line play. I also think it's a little bit because he's 45 years old. Okay. He's he's old. Okay, and I get why he thinks he can still play, but here's the thing: the man didn't really listen to his body in that process. He just said, "It's my love for the game. I don't want to leave my brothers behind." That's a recipe for disaster. And uh, I'm looking for a tweet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> do you remember in? Oh, the Batman movie, Dark Knight Rises. No, Dark Knight. Returns. Dark Knight, just the Dark Knight. The one with the yep, Joker. Yep. yep, yep. Harvey White's quote, you either die here or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yep. Is the exact same as saying you either retire on top or stay around long enough to get replaced. That was in reference to Matt Ryan. But this almost <laughs> applies to Brady. You either retire on top, you either retire on top or stay around long enough to ruin and tarnish your life. Brady should have retired. He'll be just fine. Um, mostly because I love that man too much. <laughs> I will always be an unapologetic Tom Brady stand. Jared Goff. Honorable mention, he was the worst of all the starters this week, only three point five fantasy points. Back to back just future performances for Goff. Just disgusting. Didn't, help, didn't then, help that Amon Ra went out, but no, no, but still, three point five is pretty inexcusable. And then Dak Prescott, look, he just didn't need to throw the football. Twelve point three fantasy points, the quarterback seventeen on the week, just didn't need to throw the football. Like I didn't look great, but he didn't look awful either. Like I think this was a good game to target to come back, uh, because now all of a sudden you do have his buy coming up in a few weeks. And you just get him, get him some action, get him back into the game, get him up to game speed. And then you go into that bye week and get him to rest and get him in rhythm again to come back and, and take off. So I think Dak will be just fine. Tight end bust of the week. Mark Andrews, yikes. Big old capital yikes. He was the worst of all tight ends to get a target this week. Point four fantasy points. Zero receptions on two targets. One rushing attempt for four yards. He'll be just fine. Don't panic. He'll be just fine. This was just such a weird game against the Browns. It's probably the game that I've hated the most out of the week because <clears throat> there's little to no explanation as to why that game right. went the way it did. Right. A hundred percent agree. Can I, can I get up and I'm going to do something quick? Yes. Okay, if you're YouTube will understand. You'll have to explain for whatever's going on uh, to 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 the podcast folks. But <laughs> don't mind me taking a victory lap. Kyle Pitts, that dude stinks. Five targets, three receptions for nine yards. Not <laughs> I have my headphone case. I nearly just spiked it into the ground. How are you only going to have three yards of reception? 
What? <laughs> I like. I can't believe this. <laughs> hey, remember he's a top eighteen option, so you yeah, do his, to... <laughs> his floor. Yeah, his floor is a tight end twenty eight. It doesn't matter. He's still a top thirty tight end. Miss me with all of that. Get that man off your team if you can. Oh goodness, <laughs> Zach Ertz. You just expect a little bit more from this. Only two two receptions on four targets for twenty one yards. Did have a two point conversion. Uh, hey. uh, I'm not I'm not too concerned going forward. This was all DeAndre Hopkins. Well, it was all DeAndre Hopkins, and the fact that Arizona's defense gets two pick sixes right before halftime, yeah. like right. That doesn't. Yeah, that not not needed as much. So Zach Ertz will bounce back. Honorable mentions. Looking right into you the can camera skip it. for this. You one. can skip it. Camera, you suck. You got to take Mo Ali Cox out of this document, man. <laughs> I don't care that he put up another goose egg this week. I still love that man. Uh, and Rob Bob Dunyon, uh, tight end 20 on the week, only 6.2 fantasy points. That wraps out our booms and busts of the week. To recap, week seven of fantasy football, we do recognize waivers are going to be running in the next foreseeable future. Probably tonight, when you listen to this episode, if you listen to it on Tuesday, your waivers will run tonight. We want to make sure you are prioritizing the right players, so let's rapid wire, rapid fire, <laughs> rapid fire waiver wire. Man, let's Kyle ra- Pitts has rapid gotten fun. you just ra- a little wound up. Oh, dude, he, oh, Kyle Pitts. Just the pits, man. Let's rapid fire our top waiver wire ads of the week to close out the episode. Uh, Ty, I'm going to start with you here. First one up, uh, Deontay Foreman. And really the only, I shouldn't say the only, the explanation that I can give for Deontay Foreman, he's in a committee with Chua Hubbard. It could be either one of their games. This past game, it was Deontay Foreman. He put up over 100 rushing yards. Stash him. I don't think you're playing him. This offense really isn't that great enough to put him in your lineup, but you hold on to him just in case if something happens where you know he does take over. Yeah, and and I, I forgot to preface this. Typically, we'll put guys who are rostered in 50% of leagues or less on this list. Deontay Foreman is rostered in about 60% of 12-man leagues over on Sleeper. Uh, and same with Michael Carter. Uh, who is my first waiver wire ad of the week with no breeze hall. Uh, again, I think they use kind of the combo of Michael Carter and Ty Johnson, though Michael Carter has looked pretty good this year. Uh, but if he's available on your waiver wire, yeah, you got to go get him because uh, he, he will play a more crucial role now for this jets offense to try and, and replicate what breeze hall was doing for them. My next go ahead. Guy. We can, we'll, we'll make our next round. Yeah, go for it. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Rapid fire, baby. Rapid, Rapid fire. fire. Josh Palmer, okay? And the he's now the wide receiver, too. Mike Williams is out four to six weeks. He's wide receiver, too. Must add. And what why he's such a priority on this list is because he's on a bye week, okay? And we, this needs to be discussed. It doesn't matter that this guy's on, an, on a bye week. You add him. Because he won't be there after the bye. He won't be there once waivers kick through. Get him while you can. Because I'm not going to say he's guaranteed any amount of points. But you know this offense that he's playing with. He's going to come through. and And I said in the TikTok video too. He's a flex play moving forward. Yeah. He, you know, he, he's a flex play. I 100% agree. Uh, you're dropping your worst wide receiver for Josh Palmer. So it's not like you're going to you're going to play him anyways, right? So go on and get Josh Palmer before somebody else does. Wandale Robinson, six receptions in the first half. Yes, he did leave this game with an injury, but he is very clearly the wide receiver one and this coaching staff has not hesitated to get him involved as soon as he's come back from his injury. So you got to go pick up Wandale Robinson while he's still out there. Again, you're dropping your worst wide receiver for him. If you're number 1 in your league, like I made a TikTok about it. If you're six and zero or five and one, these are the like shooting for the moon players that you need to go target because Wandale Robinson could be something and play a pivotal role. So go on and get Wandale if he's still available on your waivers. 
Next up, Gus Edwards. And <clears throat> let me just say this. No one expected this out of Gus Edwards. <laughs> he got activated off of IR Saturday night. Okay. <laughs> Usually coming off an injury like an ACL that is taking him a long time to come back from. He A running back traditionally does not see 16 carries in the first game back. Granted, there were not many snaps that he played, but he got 16 carries. Okay. Yep. Those will, I mean, <laughs> he will be utilized more going forward. You're going to see less Kenyon Drake, less Justice Hill. Gus Edwards is the primary back in this offense. You have to add him. He's a goal line threat. <laughs> Not much else needs to be said. <laughs> no, and as long as J.K. Dobbins is out, he's going to be the guy. Chuba Hubbard. You brought up Deonta Foreman. I'm going to talk about Chuba Hubbard. Yes, left the game with injury as well, but saw a decent amount of rushing work. He was averaging seven yards of carry. Uh, he was getting involved in the receiving game, found the end zone as well. Like I think they're going to kind of split up the work between Deonta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard going forward. I think the the load will favor Deonta, so I absolutely agree. You should prioritize Deonta over Chuba Hubbard. But again, if you're desperate at running back, like Chuba could see enough receptions and and stumble into the end zone every once in a while where he becomes a flex play. It, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility. So if you're desperate at running back, go get Chuba out there. Um, he should be fine. Uh, it sounded like the injury was very minor. It wasn't a thing you should worry about him missing uh, an immense amount of time. Next up, Marquise Goodwin. Wide receiver three for the Seattle Seahawks. He's worth stashing if DK Metcalf misses any time. I'm not sure if I can put him into a flex territory just yet. Not yet. But he's worth having. He's worth having on your roster just in case he does, or in case DK Metcalf is out for an extended period of time. We talked about this before with DK. We think it's absolutely just crazy if Seattle tries to push him again, or not again, tries to push him to get him back. Right. Let the man rest. Let him get some rest because you need him. You need him. So Marquise Goodwin then steps in as a wide receiver too. He's got you got he's he's worth having on a roster, just like any wide receiver two on an offense. Yeah. Any you have a wide receiver two on every offense on a fantasy roster. Goodwin would not be an exception. Correct. Uh, Greg Dulcich. If you got Kyle Pitts on your team, I got a guy for you. Greg Dulcich. Back-to-back weeks of double-digit fantasy points. Uh, you said it in the video. Has he been a top seven tight end the past two weeks? Top seven. Top seven tight end the past two weeks. Russ is throwing to the these tight ends at a – well, I guess it was Brett Ripien. Uh, but even the week prior, Russell Wilson still targeting tight ends at a uh, absurd rate. So if you think this was just like a, a Brett Ripien kind of a thing, it's not. Russell Wilson has been targeting his tight ends at a concerning rate as well. Just something you're going to add on to that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just need something to get going. <laughs> and Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. If you made it this far, streaming tight ends and stuff, just grab, do another dart throw and grab Greg, Greg Dulcich. Dulcich. Yeah, I really like Greg Dulcich. He's looked really good to start this year. Uh, I think he's absolutely worth stashing on your team if you're streaming tight ends or are in a pinch and need a tight end. Go get Greg Dulcich. I'm now realizing that this last guy in mine is <laughs> really hard to argue for. Because... Uh, just take mine. Just take mine. We'll, we'll, okay. cut, we'll cut Latavius Murray because I agree. I, I don't I don't think you need to make him a priority at any means. But this but but this last guy, I think I personally believe you do. Jameson Williams, okay, is it, here's the thing: rookie wide receivers that miss a lot of time in the off season, away from training camps, mini camps, all that stuff, is very difficult for them to get going in the middle of a regular season. Okay, correct. And on top of that, James Williams is coming back off an ACL. Detroit spent a really high draft pick on him. So that, to me, signals that they think really highly of James Williams. So here's the thing. James Williams shouldn't, just based on protocol, I'll call it, with rookie wide receivers that miss a ton of time. Rashad Bateman did it last year, right? 
But if there's anyone that can kind of break that, it's Jameson Williams. Stash him now because he'll be coming back here in the next couple weeks, if not this upcoming week. I don't know if I've seen that anywhere. But you get the point. Grab him, stash him. Because, again, if there's anyone that can break that streak of, man, rookie wide receivers that just don't perform middle of the season, it's James Williams. It's JMO. Yeah, I think you got to make him a priority. I get all the training camp concerns, but, like, the worst you do is drop him later. There is not another player of Jamison Williams caliber on your waiver wire right now. I can promise you that. So if he doesn't perform, you drop him later. All right, rapid fire waiver wire. New segment. We'll make that maybe a little bit more rapid fire in future weeks. But at any rate, 10 players you can go out and snag on the waiver wire this week to hopefully bolster up your roster the rest of the season. Anything you want to add before we sign off here? Kyle Pitts is not a top 18 tight end. Kyle Pitts. Cut your losses with Kyle Pitts. We will stand by that. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Fantasy Football Fells podcast. I'm at Lucas Wenzel on Twitter, Tyler underscore Plath. For Tyler, FF Fellas on Twitter, the FF Fellas on Instagram, Fantasy Football Fellas on TikTok and YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on those notifications so you're alerted when we drop new podcasts, new reels, new everything. Same for the podcast as well. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on notifications so you know when our newest episode is out every single week. Two Stooges being dudes here at Fantasy Football, fellas. Sign off for now. We'll be back on Wednesday for a preview of Week 8, and we will see you all then. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs>